Right about Governor DeSantis's push for monoclonal antibodies. Joining us now is Dr. Bernard Ashby with the Committee to Protect Healthcare. And doctor, thank you very much for joining us. It's, it's confusing for the general public when they hear the FDA and the drug maker saying one thing and then the governor saying something else. How should the public be taking in this debate over the monoclonal treatments? Well, thanks for having me. And to be clear, the public should be following the science. And, and so let me just be clear on what the, what the background is. All right, monoclonal antibody therapies are therapies that are given early on uh, in patients with COVID-19. And essentially, they're neutralizing antibodies that bind to the virus and prevents it from entering the cells. They are very effective. However, with the Omicron variant and its multiple mutations, we have found that the that two monoclonal antibodies in, in particular, made by Eli Lilly and Regeneron, do not bind at all to the virus and therefore have been deemed ineffective by not only the companies that, that supply them, but by the FDA and many researchers out there. Now, the concern is uh, we're, we're not exploring other therapies that have been proven to be effective, like uh, citrovimab, which is actually another monoclonal antibody that actually binds and is quite effective. However, it is a short supply, and some of which has been allocated to Florida. But we also have uh, two recently EUA-authorized uh, oral therapies uh, Paxlovid from, from Pfizer and Malnupiravir from, from Merck. We should talk about those therapies in addition to remdesivir and some other therapies out, out there. So what I'm confused about is why are we focused on crying about what, what's been removed that's been proven to be ineffective and not focusing on the actual therapies that will actually decrease risk of hospitalization and death based on the science. So I, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss to why he's spending so much time focusing on the loss of two ineffective therapies and not pursuing uh, effective therapies uh, that will actually decrease hospitalization and death. Yes, important to know that there are other options out there for patients who are looking for something. You mentioned that the public should follow the science, but what about the doctors who have had the governor's back? They stand up there with him at news conferences, agreeing with what he has to say, including the state surgeon general. What do you have to say about why they are following what the governor says on this? Well, the state surgeon general has had a history of promoting therapies that are not evidence-based, including hydroxychloroquine, and ivermectin. Uh, he's also part of a group called America's Frontline Doctors, which basically uh, has been known for uh, for recommending uh, therapies that haven't that don't have any evidence behind them. And so this is consistent with uh, his pattern of behavior, and that's precisely why Governor DeSantis chose him because he is, is in alignment with these quote unquote alternative therapies with no evidence. And so that. Is, is my explanation. And that's my concern with having a public health official that is being politically influenced by the governor and not following the science. And you saw that today when uh, he had his hearing, uh, confirmation hearing before the uh, Senate committee. And he just basically all but refused to, to confirm that vaccines are effective. Right, and I want to ask you about that. And uh, you're talking about Dr. Ladapo, and of course he was not at the event today. We just saw a video of the event. He wasn't at the event. He was at his confirmation hearing today, and he refused to say whether or not the vaccine is effective. We're running out of time, but w doctor, what do you have to say about whether or not the vaccine is effective? I mean, we've been going through this for two years now, but I think it's worth repeating. Yeah, it's, it's just ridiculous. And this is what we talk about when it comes to politics. You know, the vaccines are effective. Yes, I mean, it, it's irrefutable at this point, but for him to sit there and, and, and hem and haw when being asked a direct question indicates that he's concerned about saying vaccines are effective because it's not politically expedient for uh, the, the governor. Any doctor w worth their weight in gold or, or whatever the saying is uh, will, will tell you yes. And if they say no, then, then they simply, they're simply not following the science. And, and that also goes for uh, a lot of the other decisions that he's, he has been making, including uh, this Regeneron fixation and not focusing on other outpatient therapies. Because we all know that early treatment in COVID-19 is vital. Uh, COVID-19 is an outpatient condition. And therefore, if you're getting hospitalized or dying from COVID-19 at this point in the pandemic, it is a failure of the system. So I would wish, I, I wish DeSantis and Odapo would focus on 
on giving uh, our patients access to these early therapies that have been proven quite effective, but uh, there's just this fixation with Regeneron, and I don't get it. A failure of the system, Dr. Ashby, a passionate, powerful way to put that. Thank you so much for being with us from the Committee to Protect Healthcare. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you.